considered, you know, going by the state. So what are we going to do next time? We're going to have that on our list. So yeah, everything you do, add it to your list. Planning out your week. Again, I don't know if I can stress this anymore. Don't leave anything to chance. You need to plan your week ahead of time. I'd suggest Sundays. Look at your work schedule or school schedule. Look at your time you're going to be spending with your family. Even put in times that you're going to be maybe getting some exercise or whatever it may be. Add that stuff in first. Then put in your work schedule around that. Right now, I bet you many of you just, whenever you can pop the computer open, that's work time. And then you probably hit your emails first. Oh, I got to go check out on that forum. You know, it, we're not going to do that anymore. The whole thing is to be efficient and make money as quick as possible and do it the, the easiest way. So you're going to look at your schedule and go, okay, I've got a window after the kids get in, I'm just examples, after the, read the kids' stories, the, from 9 o'clock, I can work for an hour and a half. I don't want to work till 1 in the morning if you're getting up at 5. Again, the whole health thing. What we're going to do is work shorter hours. You're going to use some of these rules. You're going to be more efficient. You're going to get more stuff accomplished. You might feel good because you spent five hours in front of the computer, but what did you really accomplish? So it's all about what you get done. So you're going to write down exactly when you've got windows, even if it's a 30-minute window. You'd be amazed if you've got 30 minutes to spend on something and you, that's all you've got. You can get a ton done. It's when you don't have, eh, okay, I can go in and work for whatever length of time I want. You tend to get the same amount done in two hours than you do in 30 minutes. So write that down every single week. Know exactly the time periods, the breaks, when you can get this done. And then you're also going to write down the exact jobs that you do. So you create your schedule on Sunday. Tuesday, you know you have a two-hour window. You're going to write down exactly what you're going to do. And always try to do the most important things first. The things that are going to move that project along the quickest. Or if you've got tweaks on websites, sometimes you want to do those that can make you, the changes that can make you the most money. There's still changes that I can make on websites that I've had for a couple years, and I will show you examples later, that I still have not changed because whatever reason, I don't know, but it could make me, I don't even know, uh, easily another $1,000 a month, something really simple. But now we've got it on that board, so we're prioritizing it. It is on there after this launch. We're going to be attacking all those little changes. But for whatever reason, because we never wrote it down, uh, we prioritized it, we never thought about the impact it would have on the business, it just never got done. Well, we're going to change that. Yeah, it's stupid for something that might take me an hour not to be doing. One hour might make me $1,000 a month. I mean, so you need to be worrying about that, the most important thing, but also that, the fastest. Education is not considered work. Going, it's important, but when you're sitting down with someone else's course or watching videos or reading emails, that is not work. Just, just get that out of your, that's not work. That's not going to move you forward. There are times where you do need to maybe step in and figure out something. Like if, like, oh, you know, I, I need to, you know, buy an autoresponder and I need to find out how it works. Well, watching those videos because you're needing to get it to work or you need to explain to someone how to help you if you're outsourcing it, you need to watch some training videos. That might, that's considered work in that case because you're doing it right then for the moment to get your next step accomplished. But if you're just kicking back and watching a Frank Kern video, that is not work. It's fun, it's entertaining, and you might learn something, but it's not work. All right, when you're working, you're not messing around. This is really going to be work. Turn off the instant messenger, close the email programs. Because that, I don't know if you know, you've got the, the old sounding ding or the instant messenger, all of a sudden you've got friends, you know, sending you a, a Gmail chat box and you've got to respond because you don't want to blow them off. Take it down. I would suggest close your whole email program. After you've done your work time, say if you've got a two hour window, then after that, get to your emails, start screwing off, 
send your friends uh, root emails, whatever you want to do. That's when you get on forums after you're done, at the end of the day, maybe as you're right before you go to bed. But yeah, very important. That's a huge time waster right there. I should have actually said no forums. Forums are, are good for uh, learning what your niche wants, what's hot, what they're asking for, product ideas, stuff like that. Most times they're just, they, they just waste your time. I'm always amazed when I see someone that's in a forum that's got like 4,000 posts. What are you doing making 4,000 posts? Now, some people can make a living off of doing that if, that's their, if their niche is that form. So they're maybe branding themselves, and their main goal is to get themselves known, and they create products. Like in the Warrior Forum, they create products. That can be their business model. But 99.9% of the time, people are just in there wasting time. All right. Outsource when you're frustrated with something. If you just can't figure out something, when you want it done better, when you want it done faster, and when you want to take your business to the next level. You might be really good at graphics. Or I should say, you've spent the time, you spent the time on Photoshop, you, the learning curve is huge on that program, you've put in all this effort, you've gotten pretty good at graphics, no matter what, you're still not good, unless that's your job. You can hire someone that's an expert at getting graphics done, and it might cost you fifty dollars, sixty-seven, eighty-seven. I never spend more, almost never spend more than a hundred dollars in graphics. When you're talking like header footer, e-cover, uh, uh, membership card, opt-in box, that kind of stuff. You're just not going to be as good as the people that are doing it every single day. If that's not your job. You can maybe do coding, figure out programs and stuff. It might take you, and the whole thing is frustration. I mean, you're, I'm sure there's times where you want to bang your head against a computer, chuck your computer out the window because you couldn't figure it out. Get, you know, you're not in this to get frustrated. Oftentimes, you can spend $5 and have someone install a script that would take you forever to figure out. Or never. You might never get it working. I mean, there's, uh, it's unbelievable. I've had guys fix something in 30 seconds that I'm just like, it's done already? Oh yeah, just, there's just a little error in this code here. You know, I don't even know what they're talking about, but they got it done in 30 seconds. So we're going to be going through outsourcing and, and where you can get people and how to get them and all that stuff. But for now, trust me, that is, if you want to take your business to that next level, when you're you know, up to making thousands a month and you want to make tens of thousands a month, you're going to need to outsource. You hit, you've got a limited amount of time. Even if you go full-time into the internet marketing, it's still going to limit your time. You're not going to be able to get to that next level until you outsource. All right, put down your credit card. Only buy a new product when you need it that day. So I'm sure a bunch of you have, have programs like, oh yeah, I'm going to need it eventually. I'll need an autoresponder. But you, it just sits there. I even did that with Infusionsoft. That's a high-end uh, software product. Um, it's shopping cart, uh, autoresponder. It's, you know, it's, it's huge. I loved everything it could do. I bought it. It cost $5,000 and then $300 a month. I think I went 18 months before I started using it. So do the math there. Hey, I felt good because I had it. But I wasn't ready to use it that day on that site. You know, we were still using our, the other stuff we already had, and we weren't ready, ready to implement it. It turned out it was a pretty hard program to figure out. I had to hire a girl just to do that stuff for me. I didn't have time to even learn it. So I wasn't ready to use it. If I had been ready to use it, then I would have hired that girl and got it going right away. So same thing with uh, you know, any product. If you don't need it, if there's some cool tool, tool to do keyword research, well, if you're not doing keyword research that day, don't get it. You, know, you might miss out on, okay, they're jumping the price $20 or even doubling it. You might miss out on some deals, but ultimately, how many of you have things sitting in your computer that you've bought that you've never read, never used? I'm sure a ton of you. I have too. Yeah. 
And the people aren't raising their head, you can see them just shame. <laughs> the, the shame. Yeah, myself included. I have a ton of products. Or when I go to use it, I find out, oh man, that was on the computer that my laptop that died a year ago. I don't even have it anymore. And I'm not organized enough to keep track of codes and how to go about getting it again. So yeah, I bought products twice. Just because I, when I did get to a chance of needing it, I couldn't find it. So no more of that. And yeah, only re- buy new ones if, uh, if you're replacing the ones you're currently using. Like when Camtasia came out with an upgrade, that's something I bought because I was using it. Um, and I can't think of any other products that are upgrades that I use. Um, yeah, most, most times you buy it once and it's good. It's rare that you need something new. I'm sh- sure if you're a graphic artist, new Photoshop comes out. Out After a while, you're going to need to upgrade. Um, but you don't have to maybe do it every time. But pretty much, if you've got enough education and you know what you need to do, do it. Worry about that. Don't buy any more products. And also, graph out what you've already purchased for uh, educational products. Prioritize that. Put that on the list as, okay, which of these products will move my business, when I learn it, will move my business quicker, faster, next level, make more money. You know, don't be reading, it's, it's easy to read an e-book and not, oh, oh, I got something done that I paid for. But maybe that's not the best thing to be learning. Maybe some of these other courses are better. So even prioritize what you're learning for education. All right, some advertising rules to always follow. Never buy advertising you can't track. If you don't know if something's making you sales, do not buy it. Or come up with a system where you know that it's making you sales. So sometimes like uh, if you've got your uh, affiliate link out there and you're buying banners and there's just no way to track those clicks that they equal sales, there's no way to track it, just sign up for their affiliate program twice so you have two different accounts. This one's your banner account. Then you know, okay, I spent $50 on banners and I log in, I made $200. That's making money. You can continue to do that. Then if you use the other ones in emails or your blog links, uh, again, if you can't track it, then that would be in the second account and you know, okay, sending out an emails or putting in my blog, I'm making money, I can continue doing that. Um, even free advertising. You need to be able to track that. If you're pumping out articles, run those through some type of uh, redirect URL where you can track it to sales. You might be paying people to write all these articles and it, you, or you're doing them yourself and you're uploading them and you know, time is money. So even if it's free, you want to be able to track everything. So just always remember that. Anything you do, and it can be really simple tracking. You don't need to know earnings per click and all that stuff. To start with, if you spend a dollar, did you make two dollars? You know, dumb it down that simple. You know, you, have to, you don't have to worry about all the other, you know, the return on investment. I mean, that's good to know. If you spend a hundred dollars and you make five hundred, well, you can be dumping more money into that than spend a hundred dollars and make two hundred. But for now, if you make money, that's what you want to be able to know. All right, rip people off. The whole thing about copying and modeling. That's what I mean by that. So I want you taking screenshots during these big launches. They're sales letters. I had mentioned earlier that I will receive a ton of products for free because they want me to check it out and then promote it. When it comes launch day, well, actually, I take that back. Don't do it on launch day. What I do is I will buy the product and I will go through and I will um, copy the sales pages. And it can be as simple as copy and paste into a Word doc. Or you can do screen captures. You can even do a video. Turn on your video, Camtasia video. Um, what's the other one? Jing. Um, that's from this TechSmith company too that makes Camtasia. It's free. Um, you can look up Jing Project it might be called. Um, I don't know the URL. I'll just put in Jing Project. But it's a free cam- uh, screen capture.